Alright, show them how it works. So imagine, oh, you've been holding it in all night. It's a really hardcore clear team. So you do your business, and then you hit this little button, and... Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. That is one angry toilet. adventurers from a not very sunny California. <laughs> if you guys have been following along, you know that we have driven Clementine pretty much halfway across the United States. During that time, we've really asked a lot of her. We've uh, taken her off-road a couple times, reluctantly. And then off-road again yeah. on accident. We've went up some very steep mountain passes and down some very steep mountain passes, the kind where you can smell your brakes heating up. Yeah, <laughs> that's that, not a good sign. That was not a fun one. She's had a few growing pains since we've gotten the new engine put in. Nothing major. But uh, after all this driving, we just want to get her checked out. So before we take Clementine any further, we need to get the engine a once over, we need to check out the brakes, the suspension, all that good stuff. So while Clementine is in the shop, we figured why not trade up and live in the lap of luxury? <laughs> so this is our new vehicle. We're also in the middle of a warehouse, by the way. <laughs> That's why there's a lot of background noise. This is the Mirage 4x4 van made by True Van. To put this into perspective, this vehicle cost us about $4,000 used when we bought it. This one is around $200,000. <laughs> Quite a difference. Just like the, the tiniest difference. <laughs> yeah. While Clementine is at the mechanic, we are going to let her chill, do her thing. They're going to take as much time as they need, and we are going to hop in this beast and take it all over Southern California. It kind of puts Clementine to shame, sadly. Oh no, be nice to yeah. Clementine. Probably shouldn't say that so loud with her <laughs> right over there. <laughs> but we got this van all packed up. We are going to t whisk Clementine away over to the mechanic, and then we're going to hit the road and drive off into the desert. Let's do it. What are you doing over there? Uh, okay. Let's go. What are your first impressions going from Clementine to this? It feels as big, but boy does it speed up and slow down so oh, yeah. much better than Clementine. And it is so quiet. First off, the engine is just very quiet, <laughs> but you might be able to hear there's a little bit of rattling around going on back there, which is common in vans, but um, Clementine rattles around 10 times more than this. Oh yeah, that's why we had to put the curtains. It was just so noisy when you were driving down the road. I've been accidentally stopping way too abruptly because the brakes work very well on this. But we do want to give a huge thank you to uh, True Van for partnering with us for this video. We've actually been talking to them for quite a while. We've been dying to take one of their vans out. The stars just aligned perfectly on it. Clementine was going into the shop for a week, so we have a week to take the van out. It is going to be a freaking blast, you guys. Oh, yeah. But our plan is to head out west and explore Joshua Tree. But on the way, we're going to show you guys all the different bells and whistles that this thing has. So once we get used to it and we learn where everything is, we're going to take you guys on a little tour. But for now, it's just us and the open road. Or LA traffic. Or LA traffic. But then eventually, the open road. The open road. Y'all, we had this bright idea to take the van out and do some dry camping on a dry lake bed, but we didn't anticipate a gigantic dust storm. It's more like a dust tornado. It's coming right for us. Gosh, it's about to hit us. I'm so scared. I don't know if it's gonna like shake us or what. The real important thing is to make sure I don't fly my drone too close to it because it's just gonna get sucked up like a twister. Wow, is this a crazy spot or what, you guys? I feel like I'm on another planet. That was crazy. As we pulled up, there were just like 
dust tornado after dust tornado, there were some that were just so freaking <laughs> massive and then some that were tiny off in the distance and then they just rose up into the sky just like endlessly. These are like the most and longest sustain that I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, so we ended up coming out to the Joshua Tree area. We are actually at the Joshua Tree BLM land. Yeah, would you believe that this is actually a lake bed? It's just a little dried up at the moment. But it is a popular wild camping spot because you can just kind of drive onto the lake and go anywhere, do anything. And it seems pretty easy to get your own private spot. I mean, I can see a bunch of different RVs and vans off in the distance, but they are very far away from us. We, we're terrified that we're going to turn around and there's going to be a giant dust tornado. Oh man. <laughs> there is a big one over there. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> the lake bed is sitting at the base of these two kind of small mountain ranges and there's this valley that goes right through it and I think that's where the tornadoes kind of form and then they just fly through this valley kind of on the same course every time. But yeah, this just seemed like the perfect spot to pull over, spend the night, and uh, most importantly give you guys a look at our awesome 4x4 off-road camper. Woo! That's it. That's it. Let's, Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> the Mirage 4x4 and y'all would you believe it's 23 feet so it's one foot bigger than Clementine and that means lots and lots of living space to do that in this is this is necessary for van life but the first thing you'll notice when you walk in here is everything is very clean very open very modular for a van it feels really spacious and I especially love that I can be here at the sink and Eric can still sneak on by yeah, check it out Woo! Hey, uh... I get a little love tap in there, but I don't mind it. Did you just say a little love tap? <laughs> yeah, that's when you gently All right, move on, them. move on. <laughs> they also put a huge emphasis on storage. There's storage here, down here, over here, here, up here, all back here. That is definitely one of the most important things we've realized about van life is you need to have storage space to keep the area clean and free of clutter so that you don't lose your ding ding mind. This is our little kitchen area. It's got a decent sized sink. It's pretty deep with a little noodle head. Very important. Is that the technical term for that? Yeah. It makes it so much better when you're trying to wash dishes in a small space. And it's actually built kind of into the doorway here, which is such a cool use of space. So it gets it a little bit out of the way. Thus, the bigger walkway here. But even though it is a small space, it has plenty of countertop space here. It also has a cheeky little extension here, so it essentially doubles your counter space. Also, I love that there is a big old window here, so when you're cooking and chopping, you can see what's going on out there. Keep your eye on the dust storms. Yeah, make sure there's no tornadoes coming to flip us over. <laughs> One thing I love is when a van has swivel seats, baby! Woohoo! This is something that we are sorely- Ah! Oh! Tripod down! Malfunction. Oh jeez. <laughs> I thought this shot was a good idea until Allison came in like a wrecking ball. I did it! <laughs> what I was saying was that that is something that we are missing in Clementine. Our seats do not swivel, and even if they did, there's not enough room for them to swivel because our seats are too big as it is. But this isn't just extra seating. This is actually a handy little hidden work area. And no, they didn't stop at just one little folding desk. They have another that slips right through here and then ta-da! You can literally have like a dual monitor set up in here. Should I keep doing this? That's You're going for it. Commit it to long. the bit, huh? <laughs> so you end up with all of this desk space and I love how they've engineered all this stuff. They actually used this tiny little gap here so that this can easily slide through. So then when you're done with it, you just slide this in here, put this up here, clip this, out of sight, out of mind, baby. I actually really like this. I wish there was some way we could incorporate something like this into our rig. Yeah, we didn't do enough cool multifunctional things. Yeah. We have our folding desk, but it's not quite like this. Yeah, I mean, it does have more room, but it'd be so cool if you just had like a hidden workspace like this. Oh well, maybe in the next build. <laughs> one thing about van life is you might be living with one, two, maybe three other people in a tiny space, and maybe you just get really sick and tired of them. Well, have no fear, because in a true van, you can shut them out. <laughs> and have your own peaceful space back here. Wait, there's more. So behind this wall is actually a full bathroom. Got a whole toilet, which we will show you in just a bit because it's wild, and a full shower head. So it is a bit of a small space. And when you pull this, you know, you're showering. We hate when we rub up on this. Have no fear. 
This comes out and extends so you can have some elbow room. They actually created this whole device. They actually engineered a bunch of stuff in here, like this little folding wall that gives you your privacy, a bunch of the latches, all of the cabinetry. It's all custom engineered and designed by Truvan. They're just a little bit smarter than us, huh? <laughs> yeah, I was telling them, I wish we had more of an engineering background when we I built know, Clementine. Dang. Next build, that's what we're saying. We went heavy on the design aspect though, all right? Design over engineering. No, like, but like... Form over function is what you're getting after? That's, Form yeah. over function, that's the one. This may look like your average, ordinary RV style toilet, but it's not. What the heck is that? <laughs> It's a dry toilet. And no, we're not going to do a demo. I know this POV shot made it look like that's what I was going <laughs> to do. Get it? POV? POV? Is that like grade school get, stuff? Get out of here. Well, um, that's why we have a cup of water. <laughs> all right, show them how it works. So imagine, oh, you've been holding it in all night. It's a really hardcore clear team. So you do your business, and then you hit this little button, and... Whoa. I promise this is normal. That is one angry toilet. Welcome to our little living room area. Or not so little living room yeah, area. Yeah, there's actually so much freaking <laughs> space back here, you guys. They got a little footrest. They have this fancy mechanism for the table so it just folds up and these little legs fold out and then voila, within about five seconds, maybe even less, you have a dining room table. If you thought that vans didn't come with a lot of storage, you were wrong. There is a wall of storage over here with like five different cubbies on it. But now you might be wondering, where the heck do you sleep? Well, there is actually a whole bedroom right above us. That's right. There is a hidden bed here, y'all, that magically lowers from the ceiling. You know that our Class C has the bed above the cab, but if we ever did another trailer or anything else, we would definitely try to incorporate something like this. It saves a ton of space. You don't have to worry about making your bed. It's always made for you. And it just pops up out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. And that's all there is to it. Actually, that's not all there is to it because there's another bed in this place. There is another bed down there. So if you have more than two people staying with you, the seats down below actually lay down flat and turn into another bed. So you have two almost queen size beds in here. It's wild. You know, I think this might have more head clearance than Clementine does. Oh, it definitely does. Yeah. It's got like a good <laughs> half a foot, maybe a foot. And there's actually no ladder in this place. They have this handy little box that turns into kind of a staircase. Y'all, another cool engineering feature. And not only does it do that, but it's actually anchored to the floor and just folds over right there, out of sight, yeah. out of mind. So that turns into that little bench that I was putting my feet on earlier. We have a staircase in our RV that we built in permanently into the wall. That's very important to us. We don't want to have to fiddle with a ladder every time we need to go to bed. No. You know? What's going on out here? Is the weather any better? A little bit better. Ooh, it's starting to cool off. Yeah. I think it's gotten a little less windy. That's good. Uh, oh, maybe it's still windy. <laughs> <laughs> I think the van was blocking it. That's all right. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's talk more about uh, what makes me jealous of this van over <laughs> our RV. Well, ours has 300 amp hours of battery. This one has 1100 amp hours of battery. <laughs> so if you take this thing off grid, you can be out there for a really long time, basically like four times longer than us. And believe it or not, the air conditioner is actually 12 volt as well. So that runs directly on the batteries for up to 60 hours. And the fridge is 12 volt too. So that means you don't even need the inverter on to use them. But what makes it even more special is that they have an alternator charger. So when you turn the van on, when you're driving it, it actually sends a bunch of current into the battery and keeps it topped up. This thing actually charges while it's idle. You can just sit there, turn on the van, chill in here, and it'll charge your battery bank up. We've, we've done it like three or four times just to make sure we're topped up. It does have a solar panel on the roof, but that alternator actually keeps it mostly charged up, so we haven't really had to get that much juice from that. But if we needed to, we got plenty of power right there. <laughs> yeah, thanks, California. Nature's battery. <laughs> it does have the same freshwater tank capacity as Clementine, though. So that's something, right? For, it's actually two gallons more, okay? <laughs> 42 <laughs> gallons versus 40. Yeah. <laughs> but this is something I absolutely love about this van, you guys. Check that out. Bloop. Bloop. Instant privacy. So you can use these to completely block out the light, like so. Oops, did I do it right? Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. 
or you can let a little light in like so and also a little bit of a breeze we've been using this every single night you guys you don't even need the ac it's awesome can you see me not really no you can't see me okay <laughs> there's a screen there yeah i'm, with I'm his behind here creepy head behind it <laughs> but you might be thinking this is a lot to fiddle with when you need to go in and out of the van oh it's not it's magnetized you guys and it's maybe the most heavy duty magnet i've ever seen on something like this this magnet actually weighs like 10 pounds this is really heavy <laughs> That's it, tour over. This has turned into a pretty freaking sweet spot, you guys. We've got the van right there. We're pumping some tunes in there. And then we're just sitting out here on the desert floor. <laughs> it's pretty cool. We're just sitting in the dirt, y'all. It's weird. It's just cool to think that this was once a lake or maybe it turns into a lake when it floods. I don't even know. And we've been watching shooting stars all night. We've been watching probably aliens come in and out of the atmosphere. Tell them about what we saw. We saw some, I don't know, line of something. It looked like a fire caterpillar going across the sky. It came into the atmosphere and went out. And if you tell us it's anything other than a UFO, we won't believe you. But most importantly, we have seen multiple shooting stars. Like, I mean, it's crazy dark out here. This is how dark it is without our lights. <laughs> or that light over we're, there. We're probably the brightest thing within half a mile of where yeah. we are. But every once in a while, the wind blows and you get a whiff of a distant campfire. I know I'm wearing a sweater. It's a little cool, but there's a warm breeze coming through every now and then. Yeah, we're actually having a blast. This it's is just a really cool vibe. So great. Breakfast is served. We went a little non-traditional and made fried rice for breakfast. Yeah, we've and, actually been doing this for a couple days now. It's delicious. Uh, we were gonna eat outside, but it is 100 degrees out there already. I mean, it's funny to look out your window and just be like, oh yeah, we're in the middle of a dry desert. Yeah, and the sun is right above us now. So we've got the AC going, so it's keeping us cool. We still get the view without the heat. And we slept so well, y'all, last night. It actually got freezing out here in the desert. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's such a strange thing to get used to. It's Crazy hot in the morning and then freezing at night. Yeah, I think we're actually gonna stay here another night. We were thinking maybe we'll go to an RV park, but why pay for that when you can have this for free? Yeah, this is our RV park. Yeah, nature. Okay, now let me eat, please. So we actually spent most of the day just uh, hanging out in the Yucca Valley, which is a town that's just like 30 minutes away from here. But we're back to our dried up lake bed home for the night. We're staying way over there last night. We decided we'd come over into this stuff. And right when we went over this ridge, it was a bunch of loose sand. It's a little more dicey than we wanted it to be. Like, obviously, I think this thing could handle it. Yeah, we got the four by four on. Yeah, we just don't want to get in a, a predicament. So now I'm just backing it up. Yeah, back that thing up, backing girl. I think we found our spot for the night. It is much less powdery out here. What's most important is that we get the best view ever. Yeah, it is so cool how as the sun sets, you start to see the different layers. There's like maybe 10 different layers of mountain peaks that you can see cascading off into the distance. It's like a painting or something. We're just doing a little uh, sunset stroll, you know? There are so many freaking paths out here. You can basically just walk in any direction. It's crazy. If you come out here in an off-riding vehicle, there are so many trails and paths and they go way up into the hills. It's very, very cool. But be advised, it is very windy, <laughs> very dusty. Yeah. It can get very hot, but man, it's a really fun experience, especially once the sun starts going down. It's great. We never really know what we're going to do when Clementine has to go in the shop because we don't really want to just go sit in some Airbnb or some hotel room. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to get out there, you know, and continue the van RV lifestyle, you know? It almost felt like a vacation because it's not our place and like, you know, we had to pack up and everything. It was kind of exciting. And it's been just so fun having a very capable, very much working machine. <laughs> they sell some smaller vans, different configurations. You can customize them, all that good stuff. And of course you can go to their website on the screen in the description below to check all that out. All right, goodbye adventures. We'll see you on the road.